Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to talk about SFBM, shear force and bending moment. What is the shear force and bending moment? Let us first understand with the help of a beam. A beam that is suspended or a beam that is supported at the two ends. Let us consider a beam which is uniformly weighted. We will try to understand what are the shear forces and bending moment acting on a beam you know considering a, a uniform beam which is of 60 kg weight supported at the ends and let us uh, assume that there is another weight 80 kg point weight which is acting at 4 meters from the left end so let us do this numerical to understand what is SF and BM here is a beam that is 6 meters in length let's call these points as a b c d e f g and you have the knife edge support over here and at 4 meters from left hand you have a down downward force which is of 80 kg there is a reactional force ra here and rg over here now the weight of the beam is 60 kg so each segment is actually of 10 kg now actually the kg is mass kg is not force but to simplify the things because we understand kilograms better than newton right we understand tons as a shippy we understand tons better than kilonewton so uh, let us do the numerical in the form of kg and later on we will convert the kg into uh, newtons etc so uh, downward force may be assumed of the beam may be assumed to be acting at D and this is 80 kg uh, this is uh, 60 kg right 60 kg now uh, if the beam is in equilibrium can I say RA plus RG is equal to 140 this is the first condition of equilibrium, right? Ra plus Rg is equal to uh, 140 kg. Now, another equation we can uh, form and that is in respect of moment. I always tell the students like uh, uh, we have uh, the unknowns being Ra and Rg whenever we want to get rid of an unknown. Take the moment about that point. Start from that point. You want to get rid of unknown. So, Always in a uh, case of beam, I tell the students that you take the moment about the left support which is giving you an unknown force called RA. So left support is at A. I will take moments about A. Assume that this point can uh, pivot. Assume that the beam can turn about this point clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now if we consider this point, you say taking the moment about A, what are the clockwise moments? Clockwise moments are 60 multiplied by 3. Another clockwise moment is 80 multiplied by 4. This should be equal to anti-clockwise moment that is Rg multiplied by 6. So this is 180 plus 320 equal to 500 uh, so RG is equal to 500 divided by 6 so that is 83.33 kg so RG is 83.33 kg but the total of RG and RA is 140 so RA should be equal to Six point six seven kg. So we have found out these two unknown starting with the principle that the beam is in equilibrium. So weights are uh, uh, net weight acting on the beam is zero and net moment about any point is uh, zero. So we took the moment about the left support. We found that clockwise moment equal to anti-clockwise moments. So uh, what we have got finally is I will write it here R A is equal to 56.67 and Rg equal to 
3.33. To find out shear force, what I suggest is shear force is a vertical force, right? Uh, before we do the shear force, in respect of shear force, let us have the convention. Different books can have different conventions. Your lodicator can have a different convention, but let us do, uh, let us follow a convention. You can follow any convention. And the convention which I follow is all the, suppose we talk about B as point under consideration, all the forces to the left of B, which are upwards are positive, all the forces which are downwards to the left of point under consideration are negative, right? So, uh, to find out the shear with the sign convention, to find out the shear force at A, what I do is I put a screen here. When I put a screen here, what I see on the left of it is nothing, zero, right? So shear force to the left of point A is zero, right? So writing down the table SF, as I said, we'll be doing the calculations in terms of kg. The forces to the left of A is zero. And if I move my screen, move the screen a millimeter to the right of A, slightly to the right of A, because uh, at A there is this point force acting in upward direction, and that is equal to 56.67. Suddenly I find the force to the left of the point uh, where I put the screen is 56.6. So can I say at A the shear force jumps from 0 to 56.67? Right? To understand the shear force because we are considering the shear force precisely at uh, all these points, given points, let us consider point B. Point B is the point under consideration. There is a segment, one meter segment of the beam which is weighing 10 kg and let us say this 10 kg is working at this point. So what are the forces, net forces to the left of point B? Because 10 kg is working downwards, it is negative. So can I say at B it is 56.67, 56.67 minus 10, that is 46.67. Similarly at C, it will be 36.67. At D, it will be 26.67. At E, what happens is, if I total up the forces to uh, a point which is slightly to the left of E, where I don't see this 80 kg, at that point, the force is 16.67. The total of all the vertical forces till a point slightly to the left of E. But when I shift the screen to slightly to the right of E, I find there is a negative force of 80 kg, right? So <coughs> the transition is from plus 16.67 minus 80. And 16.67 minus 80 is now till the point slightly to the right of E, we found that the shear force is uh, minus 63.33. That is the total of all the vertical forces to the left of that point. If we put the screen to F, this becomes minus 73.33. If I put the screen slightly to the left of G, then it becomes minus 83.33, the total of all the forces. And if the screen is shifted slightly to the uh, right of G, the total of the forces will be minus 83.33 plus 83.33. So it will become zero. So we started with point A where the shear force jumped from 0 to 56.67 kg and at G you have seen that the shear force jumped from minus 83.33 to 0. If we draw a graph for the beam, So these points are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now the maximum force that uh, we experience here is minus 83.33. So let's take a scale, uh, say uh, 10 kg is equal to 1 centimeter and I will compress the scale slightly. So don't go by proportion 10, 20, 30, 40, 
50, 60, 70, 80, 90, minus 80 and on this side 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 etc. Uh, 60 plus 60. This is SF. So uh, you can see that from the point A it jumps to 56.67. And thereafter, uh, it continuously reduces till E. At E, it is plus 16.67. That means somewhere here. And from there, it jumps down to minus 63.33. And the graph goes like this. You would appreciate that this line is parallel to this line which shows that it is a uniform beam and you have the vertical run of shear forces at three points which shows that there are three point forces acting on the beam. right? And uh, another point of observation is this is a shear force diagram. You will find that the total of the positive area if you calculate is equal to the negative area. right? Total of positive area under the SF curve is equal to total of negative area under the SF curve. So look at the SF curve. The uh, characteristic of uniform beam is parallel slant lines. Parallel slant lines, right? And vertical run indicates the position of the point forces, right? So at point E, you can see the uh, curve is running vertically downward. Now we'll try to find out the BM ordinates. There are different ways in which we can find out the BM ordinates. One of such is uh, uh, like uh, uh, calculus method. Then another method is area under the SF curve till the point under consideration. Suppose we want to find out the bending moment at B. Find out what is this area and that is uh, uh, the bending moment ordinate. It's not possible to bend any beam right at the end. You know, that is the principle. So bending moment at A is zero. Bending moment at B, to find out the bending moment at B, let us assume that we have clamped this, like uh, we have firmly clamped this by carpenter's vice or something like that. What are these forces which are acting to the left of this point under consideration? There is this 10 kg force which is trying to turn this segment of the beam in an anti-clockwise manner and there is this force which is trying to turn the beam in a clockwise manner, right? Our sign convention is clockwise moments to the left of point under consideration gives give positive moments and anti-clockwise would give negative. So we have the total moments acting at B being 56.67 multiplied by 1 minus 10 multiplied by half because this 10 kg is apparently acting from uh, a midpoint of AB. Right? So this will give me a value that is I have to subtract 5, so 51.67. 51.67 is the bending moment at B. Right? Now, what is the bending moment at C? The clockwise bending moment, that is a positive bending moment, is 56.67 into 2. And the total of the weight of the beam to the left of C is 20 kg. But the centroid of this part is over here. So multiplied by distance 1 meter. So minus 20 into 1. <coughs> so 56.67 into 2 equals uh, minus 20. Gives me 93.34. 93.34. At D in a similar way. It will be 56.67 into 3 minus 30 into 1.5 because 30 kg will have centroid 1.5 meters from B. So this becomes 56.67 into 3 equal to minus 
25 gives me 125 next will be 56.67 into 4 minus 40 into 2 56.67 into 4 equal to minus 80 146.68 At F it will be 56.67 into 5 minus 50 into 2.5 and also minus 80 into 1. So uh, that becomes uh, 56. Point 6, 7 into 5 that is positive minus 125 minus 80 it gives me 78.35 78.35 and lastly it is 56.67 into 6 minus 60 into 3 minus 80 into 2 so this is 180 and this is 160 uh, 340 and 56.67 into 6 is also 340 so 340 minus 340 is equal to 0 now the bending moment would be maximum at a point where the previous curve that is the shear force curve is changing the direction shear force curve is changing the direction at E so I'm expecting that the bending moment is maximum at E uh, rightly so it is 146.68 kilogram meters now bending moment at ends is equal to zero that is another thing which I have to remember another thing which I would like to tell the students is where well, the previous curve is horizontal straight line the next curve is going to be slant straight line but the previous curve if it is slant straight line the next curve would be curvy linear so we are expecting that the bending moment curve from A to E and from E to G is going to be curvy linear now curvy linear means there is center of curvature somewhere where is the previous curve heading downwards or upwards it is heading downwards so center of curvature is going to be in a down position so whatever is the maximum from here to that maximum i'm going to go along a curvy linear path with the center of curvature down right so uh, we are going to decide the scale now the scale the maximum being 146.68 we may have a scale that 20 kg meters this is the SF scale and BM scale 20 kg meter is equal to 1 centimeter so it's going to be this way 0 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 and so on so the maximum is going to be over here and from here to here if I put the points like for example B is 51.67 51.67 51.67 C is 93.34 and D is 125 over here so you can see that the path of the curve is going to be like this and similarly the rest of the path is going to be like this the bending moment will be zero at the ends so you can see the SF and BM curve can be drawn like this now if we want to know what is the maximum SF uh, that is acting and at what point it is acting so maximum shear force maximum shear force 
you can see from 0 it jumps to 56.67 and from minus 83.3 to uh, uh, 0 it is at G so the maximum shear force was 83.3 negative so 83.33 kg is equal to 83.33 into 9.81 that gives me 817.47 newtons so uh, to find out newton we simply multiply the kilogram by 9.81 and actually the force is newton not the kilogram maximum bending moment if somebody asks the maximum bending moment in this particular exercise is happening at e where the weight is suspended or where the point weight is acting and the value in terms of newton meters is 146 point six eight into nine point eight one that gives me one four three eight point nine one four three eight point nine newton meter that is the bending moment acting at point four meters from the left hand 